Hello everyone, my name is Noah and welcome to the Stet Studio. Today we're going to be setting up a two book spread in my reading journal. I thought that would be fun. I've got my coffee, I've got my stamps, I've got my glue, I've got my mild liners, and pretty much everything I can think of that I'll need. If it's not everything, I'll grab something. But yeah, I thought that would be a fun, slightly different thing to do since I recently shared with y'all my reading journal and did like a full flip through of my first quarter reads. I actually have been getting behind on making spreads, so I thought it would be fun to make one with y'all. And I have said that so many times now, it doesn't even feel like a real phrase anymore. Moving on. This is a journal that I got at Barnes & Noble. I do not know what journal it is or what company it's from. I've looked, I can't find it on their website. I'm sure it's there, I just can't find it. I'm not actually a huge fan of this cover and the paper is a little thin for what I want to do with it, but it serves and it's fun and I've been enjoying it. And if you're interested, the book I am listening to now is actually Ray Bear by Jordan Ifueco. Since we're doing a reading video, I thought that might be fun. I'm going to be doing this a bit like I would with my bullet journal videos. And we have the paper here full of little pictures I'm going to cut out. We've got the covers of the two books that we're going to be working on today and some other pictures that I feel like mesh with the vibe of the two stories. And since they're both on single pages each, they do need to be smaller photos. Most of these I will be trimming down at least a little bit. Now this is just scrap paper that I have had and not used. This is actually part of a quilt pattern that I made earlier this year. So yeah, I like to keep paper that maybe I print out and don't need or it prints out twice or whatever and this is one way that I can use it up. I do try to keep everything on one paper together and I will fill up a document like this and then print it out. I usually fill it up all the way before printing. But since today we're making a video specifically about these two books, I only wanted to have a paper with pictures for these two spreads on them just to eliminate any sort of confusion. And I will be doing a voiceover from here on out. I'll tell you about the process and maybe a little bit about the books. So yes, let's get started. So obviously the first thing I do is I cut out all the little papers and I definitely could print this out on sticker paper, but I feel like the convenience of sticking it down without having to glue it really isn't that significant. So I just reuse scrap paper and it's not that much more work to glue it down. I feel like I have a little more control and I'm reusing things that would otherwise just be thrown out. So. To talk a little bit about the books, The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu, I read it from the 24th of April to the 28th of April as an audiobook that I rented on a library app, I forget which one. And I don't know if it's a YA or a general adult anthology of short stories, but either way I feel like a teen could read it and it would be fine, but also as an adult I read it and enjoyed it. I did give it 3 out of 5 stars, which you will see when we come to it, but I don't think that's because overall it was a poor book, it's just I didn't resonate with every single story and a lot of times that's just kind of how it is with anthologies. Nobody is really going to love, absolutely love every single story. And then The Moon of the Crusted Snow for a quick overview by Wabashig Rice. I read that from the 30th of April to the 10th of May and part of the reason it took me so long to read it, that's like 10 days, and it usually doesn't take me that long to listen to audiobooks, is because the suspense at the beginning of the novel, this is an apocalyptic um, novel, a post-apocalypse type novel, was so strong and I just, I wasn't really in a headspace at the time to deal with such strong tension and like sense of foreboding that I just had to put it aside for a little bit and read a different book, which I think actually ended up being the Rise of Kiyoshi. It was very good. It also, I think, helps that I couldn't really remember what the book was about. I'd put it on my TBR so long ago that I was like, I think it's a, you know, a post-apocalyptic kind of horror novel, but I'm not sure. So I really didn't know what was going to happen, but the suspense was just so well written. I think that's my favorite part of this entire, this entire story was the way the suspense was written. It was fantastic. So since we're working on the Tangle Root Palace, I'm going to go back to that. Um, I wanted to print out pictures that represented, maybe not every story because I didn't think I'd have room if I did that, but some of the stories that were the most memorable to me that stuck out because it had been a while since I've read this book. I don't necessarily remember exactly everything, but I thought it would be fun. These are the stories, whether they were my favorites or not, 
the ones that stuck out in my mind the most. I picked one picture for each of them except for Where the Heart Lives, which ended up with two pictures, which are the spooky lady in the forest and the uh, graveyard, which is all the way to the right on this spread. And I stamped out the Tangle Root Palace, the title. I like to have the title somewhere obvious, even though it is on the cover of the book, which I also like to include. I like to find the version of the cover that was the one I saw. And even though most of these books are audiobooks, so it would have been a square, I like to find the, the rectangle version of that cover if possible, just because that's what I think of when I think of a book cover. And then I will also write in the author, even though it is visible on the cover, just, I don't know, because I want to, I guess. And then I will include the year it was published, the number of pages, and the length of the audiobook. And I include all of those things regardless of how I read it. Even if it's an audiobook, I will include the pages, and even if I read it as a physical book, I will include the length. And then I have this stamp for five stars that I can fill in, and it's been really helpful so I don't have to draw stars. And I also have stamps that I use to indicate how I read the book. I thought that was just a fun little you know, kind of record keeping way of showing that. I use my gray archival ink stamps and I do tend to change the color of the ink depending on the color of the cover, the vibe of the book, all of that. But yeah, so the stamps show that it was a library book and that I listened to it. And I also have a date stamp, which I think is fun because it depends on how old you are, but I know nowadays all library, when you check out library books, it's all done by computer, which is fine. But when I was growing up and before that, um, there was an actual physical card that was in the book and it was stamped with the return date and the date that you pulled it, took it out and it was this kind of stamp that was used. So it's a kind of fun, not really a throwback, but way to tie it in. And I did give it three and a half stars. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to go out of order with the stars for some reason. That was an accident. I don't know. I did that with the mild liner. And then you can see here I'm writing in the titles of the books that go with each picture. I had to Google a list of the titles. I couldn't necessarily remember all of them, but I thought that it would be a fun way to continue. Like when I look back a year from now, and I'm like, I don't remember what any of these stories were called. It would be a fun way to keep that memory around. And I think that it looks all right. If I had planned that from the beginning, I probably would have spaced things better so that I didn't have to write over the tree for Sympathy at the Bones or write on the picture itself. When you see the fence post, I did write on the actual picture because there wasn't any room to write elsewhere. But overall, I think that the titles really add to it. I will talk about that a little later. I thought that it was a fun way to include something new with this um, sort of foresty silhouette it is really a big part of the book, and she talks about that, the author does, in the introduction to the book, about how it was a super important theme in her life at the time when she was writing most of these stories. So yeah, I just thought that it was appropriate to include. I used to not be a fan of anthologies, but over the years, I have grown to appreciate them. Like any and every group of short stories, I didn't love every single one, but they were overall very good. I think my favorites were After the Blood and Sympathy for the Bones. I loved the dark magic and undercurrent of this series. I loved the forest being ever present. And now we're getting into the Moon of the Crusted Snow, the design for that layout. And this is a piece of coffee dyed paper. I absolutely love using coffee dyed paper in my bullet journal. If you've seen any of those videos, you would know. Um, it's just something I really enjoy and I stamped the title onto this one. And I usually when I do something like this, I will stamp it before I glue it in in case I royally mess it up. I can just start over and it's not a big deal. I don't have anything I really need to cover up. In the end, this piece of paper was a little bit too big. So I did end up like ripping it to trim it down. 
and I did include uh, Wabashig Rice's name on this little piece with one of my Oto graphic liners. And by the way, the highlighter that I'm using to color in the stars, which I will also do in this spread, is a mild liner. And this book was really good. Like I said, I absolutely loved the tension and the suspense at the beginning, and I thought that it was a very interesting chance to look into a culture and an area that I don't live in. I do not live in Canada. I do not live this far north. Also, it's springtime now, so it, I just got out of the cold and the snow and all of that. We didn't really have any snow this year, but there is snow sometimes where I live. It's usually pretty common. So it was a way to take myself to a different place, a different culture, a different time of year, and I really did enjoy this book. Like I said, I did kind of have to put it on hold until I was in a better space to read it, but I, I didn't want to leave it. I wanted to come back to it. And the cover, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a car that's kind of like drifted in snow and there's people out in the distance. And I feel like this cover really just kind of shows exactly how eerie and lonely the vibes of this book are. And I included some pictures. Um, I didn't really label them or anything. Like if, if you've read the book, you know what they mean. And that's what's important to me. It just kind of gives a vibe of the book. And I also included the start and end dates. I usually have to write them down. I will write them on the page maybe. When I start a book, I'll put the name on the next page in my reading journal and pencil and write down the start and end date, or I'll do it on the TBR list. It just depends on what's available and what I'm thinking of. I use the same color of stamp pad for all of the stamping. This was again an audiobook that I rented from the library and I actually gave this five stars. I wanted to use the gray mild liner that I have. I thought that would look better, but I couldn't find it. So I just went with the blue again and I think it looks fine. It was published in 2018. It has 224 pages, so it's a little bit shorter than the Tangle Root Palace, and it's six hours and 46 minutes long if you listen to it as a audiobook. And I did have a little bit more to say for this book, so it's good that I had a little more room. I said, I understand why some people would hate this book. It is very literary in its structure, which I don't usually enjoy. However, this book is superb. The suspense was so good for the first part that I had to put it down for a few days until I was in a fit state to process it. It was a good chance for me to process the idea of the apocalypse having already happened to indigenous peoples. It struck a chord in regards to the trans legislation being passed right now. And as, as of recording this, there is still a lot going on in regards to that, so you may be in a similar situation to me. So if you do want to read this, that would be something to consider. It is a really good way to process that, at least in my mind it was for me, but it might be very triggering for you. And we've reached the end of this speed through, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it now. Okay, so this is the two finished half spreads making up the whole spread. We have the Tangled Root Palace by Marjorie Liu and the Moon of the Crested Snow. And I really do like how both of these turned out. This one, there are a few things I would change. I wish that I could somehow magically just cut in between each little tree so I could have like slotted things behind it, but that just really isn't, you know, feasible. I also feel like I maybe kind of covered up the forest a little too much. For example, I wish I could, you know, bump these up a little bit. I feel like that would have helped. So yeah, it. before I added in these titles, it kind of felt a little weird because there was all these spaces, but I do think having the titles of the different stories that the pictures represent was a nice touch that I kind of came up with at the end. It wasn't really something I was planning on doing, but then I was looking at this and I'm like, it, I want to know what stories I'm associating these things with. So that was a nice little touch. I think it looks nice. I really like how wavy the Tangle Root in Tangle Root Palace looks. I think I did a pretty good job stamping. I'm getting better at it, so that helps. And then for The Moon and the Crested Snow by Wabashig Rice, um, this was definitely my favorite between the two spreads. I also enjoyed this book more. Not that that really matters in terms of the type of spread I do for it. Some of my most complicated spreads are for books I've liked the least. It just depends on what pictures I can find and how inspired I am. This one is really simple. You just have some pictures glued along the bottom here and the cover up here, which I try to always include. I don't always remember, but I try to. And I think my favorite part might actually be the stamping on this piece of coffee stained paper. And while the author does talk about some inherited older traditions and beliefs of the people in the novel, it's really, it's set in the present. So there isn't a lot that's, you know, ye olden times. It's not like a fantasy novel set 
in faux medieval times. So the coffee stain paper wasn't really necessary, but I wanted something to kind of make the title stand out and to fill up the space here and just bring a little more interest into the spread. And I feel like these dots here look like droplets of melted snow perhaps, and I think that's kind of neat. So yeah, I really like how it turned out. And there's a little bit of glue, unfortunately, on this page. This, there we go, that's better. But yeah, I think it turned out nice. Obviously I like this book better than this one, but they are both pretty good. So yeah, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different than normal. Um, let me know what you thought, whether you liked it or disliked it. You know, you can like or dislike the video. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts. Have you read either of these books? What did you think of them? Are they on your TBR? And if you'd like to see all of the other books that I have made spreads for so far this year, you can check out my first quarter review video and see what I've done so far. There are quite a few books in that. I think there was about 12, maybe more. I don't remember. And yeah, this is where we're at. I have fun with these spreads and it's a fun little hobby to include and, you know, kind of keep track of what I've read. Like I said, leave a comment, ring the bell, all that silliness, and thank you so much for spending some time with me in the Stet Studio today. Goodbye!